Fighting podcast by moonlight. Winning lessons by daylight. Never running from a real fight. Your geek history lesson on Sailor Moon is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I am Jason, sometimes Jupiter Inman. Welcome to your mind university because this is the podcast where we take one construct, one character, one book, one cartoon and tell you everything you need to know about it in a little bit less than an hour. And today's subject, today's history lesson, I should say, is what, Ashley? Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. Yeah. I've been waiting to do this lesson as long as Geek as your lesson you? has existed. Oh, since the very beginning? I've pitched it every single year, <laughs> and Jason has said, you have to tie it into something, and then this year happened, and we could do whatever we want. That's so right. Said, we're, we are in the, we are in the wild west <laughs> of podcast topics, so that makes sense why today, or today, is Sailor Moon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm excited. I know, I know how much you... Love Sailor Moon. I love Sailor Moon so much. I have <laughs> bought you a Sailor Moon action figure as a gift once. Yes, twice. Three uh, times? Ah, it doesn't matter. Many times. This is, Ashley, this is not a, a point system, okay? It doesn't matter. It is. It doesn't matter how many times I'm point. Um, we even, you know, like there is a reference to a comic book character that we created together specifically because of Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of connections here. So I'm expecting a lot of heart, a lot of moon symbology, and a lot of girls sparkling into the cosmos. Yeah, I, don't, I, yes. I, I don't know. Is that, is, is that correct? That is very correct. Is that correct. a correct terminology? Sure. Have I, failed, have I offended the sailors in any way? Uh, is that what you call the fan? What do you call the fandom of Sailor Moon? Sailors? Moonies. <laughs> I think sailors is better. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I don't really... Um, different subsections have different yeah. names. I like Senshi or Scouts because Senshi like, is translated as Scouts So because they're Sailor Scouts. Oh, so I like so, that. So Sailor Scouts is like they're grouping. Yeah, I know, I'm, like getting, what, I know I'm getting ahead of you. I'm sorry. Yeah, because they wear the sailor uniforms. Oh. So like the team, they're Sailor Scouts. I still think sailors are better. So you guys tweet us at, <laughs> at GHL Podcast on our Twitter and tell us, is Moonies better? Is uh, Senchies? Senchies, Senchies or Scouts. Or is Sailors better? I think Sailors is the winner. I want to give a quick TA shout out to at Charbros, who was the first person who requested this lesson back in 2014. Holy when 2014? We first Got a Twitter, or I'm sorry, when we first had a Tumblr before we had a Twitter. So that, that is how long they have been waiting for this lesson. So thank you for this OG request. There you go. Yeah. So should we move into the first part of the podcast? We have a lot of mythology. Okay. To get the first part of the podcast <laughs> is the 10 cent origin where Ashley is going to explain to you everything you need to know about Sailor moon i almost said sailor jupiter because i know that's your favorite that's right um <laughs> in case you go to a sailor moon party and you're asked around fancy cocktails and bow ties and ties hey who's the sailor moon person yes so sailor moon is a magical girl genre manga and anime series if you say manga and you're gonna make fun of me for saying manga don't tweet me it was created by naoko takeuchi she's so beautiful. She's so lovely. She's so creative. I have so much respect for her, and I'm sorry that I said your name improperly. Also, gear up, because I'm not Japanese, so I'm doing my very best. But she is one of the most iconic manga creators of all time. The manga was published by Kondasha, or is currently published by Kondasha, which you may know because they published Attack on Titan, Akira, Alita, Cardcaptor Sakura, Cheese Sweet Home, Ghost in the Shell, Peach Girl, Princess Jellyfish, Magic Knight, Ray Earth, Tsubasa, all of these really really, really iconic uh, properties. And a lot of the clamp stuff is now over at Kondasha. It was originally published in chapters from December 28th, 1991 oh. to February 3rd, 1997, okay. uh, which is also, in my opinion, some of the best era of Batman. It was published one chapter at a time, then collected together in 18 volumes. So this is something that people yell at us a lot about online, Jason, because- they do. Um, we like to say that we like the manga model. We like the Japanese model where it comes out of one big collection every six months. Traditionally, manga is published in a digest where you'll get a collect. So you get like a Sailor Moon story and then you get a Princess Jellyfish story and then you get a Magic Knight Ray Earth story. And then 
uh, after so much time, they collect them together in the volumes. That's changing a little bit now. They are moving a little bit more towards the graphic uh, novel. Semantics. But that is how Sailor Moon was originally published. Okay. It has spawned subsequent television shows, including Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal in animation. And it was adapted for television by Toei Animation, who did Sally the Witch, one of the OG Magical Girl shows, One Piece, Dragon Ball, Digimon. You can also check out our Digimon lesson. I was going to say that was like, taught by me. I was going to say that name sounds familiar. In episode 204. The series follows the adventures of a schoolgirl named Usagi Tsukino. Usagi means rabbit. Usagi Ojimbo? It's like Usagi Ojimbo. Yes. As she transforms into Sailor Moon to search for a magical artifact, the legendary silver crystal. She leads a diverse group of comrades, the Sailor Scouts slash Senshi, mm-hmm. as they battle against villains to prevent the theft of the silver crystal and the destruction of the solar system. Presently, they are making a two-part Sailor Moon animated movie titled Sailor Moon Eternal to be released sometime in 2020? Question mark. Who knows? And that is your ten cent origin on Sailor Moon. Mm. Shall we move into the next part of the podcast? Yes, the next part of the podcast is the meet cute. That is where Ashley is going to talk about where she first meted and cuted Sailor Moon because that is a term we saw around a comedy of talking about where characters first meet each other. Ashley, um, I honestly don't have a meet cute for Sailor Moon because I don't remember where I first encountered them. I kind of just feel like I've always known who they were Mm -hmm. and around. So I am going to pass on this one. Can I actually ask you a quick question? Go ahead. Did any of your sisters watch Sailor Moon? No. Okay. No, I... I'm not really sure when it came to America. I don't... Because it came to Canada first. Yes, no, neither one of my sisters of my two sisters, everybody. Uh, There's my There's my Tencent origin. Two sisters. (laughs) Um, No, I don't remember being aware of Sailor Moon until I was in college. Okay. And I, you know, and I think I was aware of Sailor Moon because I would see like products. I would see yeah, like yeah, toys yeah. or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, what's that? But I, I, I've never watched Sailor Moon. So I don't really remember when I started watching it, but I started watching Sailor Moon when what is called the Deke dub came out. Okay. Uh, Deke is a Canadian production company, D-I-C. And the logo comes up and goes, Deke. Is the Deke dub also the American version? No. So the Deke dub was the first English language version. It was done in Canada by Canadian voice actors. Okay. It was the first one that came to America, but I don't know when it came to America, but I know it came to America later. There is a new dub, a modern dub, where nobody sounds right, and Luna doesn't have a British accent, and I am very upset by it. Interesting. Uh, but so I... Came to Sailor Moon when the Deke dub was first airing in Canada. It was before I was in grade school, and I loved it. I remember thinking that the animation, I just thought it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I thought they were so stunning, and my mom said that they were creepy and scary. Your mom thought Sailor she, Jupiter was scary? My mom hates oh, that's so like funny. that anime aesthetic. And, oh, yeah? Um, I was something that I imprinted on like so early and has definitely shaped my taste. I love magical girls to this day. I still watch Sailor Moon, but I don't remember like the first episode I ever saw, but I remember watching it on YTV. So shout out to Canada's YTV and the Deke. Is YTV a children's uh, channel in Canada? Yes, youth television. Ah, okay. And they were one of the first importers of a lot of those early English. So Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Mm. Ball uh, was all on YTV. Still on the air today. Yay. So that's my meet cute for Sailor Moon. Uh, they do not sponsor this podcast. They do not. Hey, you want to? You call us anytime. We certainly have our We numbers. love you. Yeah. Uh, let's move into the History 101. Uh, History 101 is Ashley is going to dive into the main meat of Sailor Moon. Although it wouldn't be meat. It would be cheese because she is the moon and we all know the moon is made of cheese. She has a cat. So that's meat. Let's not get gross here, Ashley. Sailor Moon. This, as is, a, this is a kid's cartoon. That's true. Uh, a lot of nudity for a kid's cartoon. Is there a lot of nudity in yes, this? Yes, there's also a lot of homosexuality that we pretend are cousins later on. Uh, so Sailor Moon, as we know it, was originally a short manga series called Codename Sailor V, the letter V, like Ashley V. Robinson. And it focused on a single magical girl, and it was published in 1991. Creator 
Naoko Takeuchi redeveloped the manga to explore a bigger world with more all-encompassing characters, including Sailor Moon and the rest of the Senshi. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, that original Sailor V character appears as an in-universe video game in Sailor Moon. And she has a very iconic look, right? She's got the suit with the little orange skirt on and the glasses. And that look basically became Sailor Venus. Okay. Um, And Sailor V is... Good friend of the pod, past guest, Emma Fife's favorite sailor, Senshi. Oh, cool. It was her goal to create a story. Me favorite sailor. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make that a thing. Okay. <laughs> it was her goal to create a story about girls in outer space. We love that here on the podcast. We do. <laughs> we do. And the idea may seem really simple, but I think knowing that explains a ton about Sailor Moon. It's literally in the name. I mean, it's all about cosmology, so yeah. Exactly. Sailor V at the time was being developed for animation by Toei. And with input from her editor, Fumio Osana, the rest of the ensemble was born. We will get into who they are very shortly. Mm -hmm. Uh, In fact, Takeuchi planned to kill all of the Sailor Senshi at the end of the story, but her editor said that that was antithetical to the shoujo style of storytelling. Jason. Yes. Do you know what shoujo is? No, but just based on what you said, I'm going to guess it's something about, um, you know, the group and ongoing adventures. Uh, No, but that's a good try. Okay. So shoujo and shonen are the two styles of anime. And uh, because Ah. of heteronormativity, shoujo is girl anime and shonen is boy anime. So things like Pokemon are considered shonen and shoujo is like magical girls like Sailor Moon. So in shoujo... Is Pokemon considered masculine? Because to me, I kind of think it's for both sexes. uh, It is considered a shonen style. Because it stars a boy. And there's fighting in it. Yeah. I mean, there's fighting Whereas, in Sailor Moon, right? There's lots of fighting in Sailor Moon. I mean, but there's lots of shoujo, nudity. Uh, there is nudity, but the, the the thesis of Sailor Moon is love conquers all. And Sailor Moon right. always wins like by, by using, yes, uh, by all, <laughs> always wins by using the power of love. So you couldn't kill them yes. without bringing them back because that is antithetical to, you know, the idea. Interesting. Okay. So the series was described in early marketing as a mix of magical girl and super sentai. Super sentai, you may know in North America as power. Ranger. Yes, I do. Uh, so I think that's really cool. And Super Sentai was a really early influence in its creation. The manga series was originally only supposed to be one arc, so one collected volume, but due to its popularity and the popularity of the television anime adaptation, four more arcs were created, often releasing simultaneously in Japan as books and television shows. Can I ask you a question? Yes. And you may not know the answer to this, and it's fine. When you say like an arc for Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. Do you know like how many issues or how many pages, like how long that is when you say an arc? For, uh, like, an what, arc, is, what is an arc for like Sailor Moon? Uh, six to eight okay. or one completed volume. So like one manga book in your hand would be an arc. Okay, okay. So it cool. would be like one trade paperback. Okay, It's fair. almost the equivalent. That, okay, that, that tracks. And for the sake of continuing the story after the original run, the character of Chibiusa was introduced. Chibiusa literally means Chibi Usagi. It means small Usagi. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask's daughter from the future. For Jason's reference, she's the one with pink hair. Uh, that doesn't really help me, but sure. <laughs> she literally used to stand on that shelf behind you. Okay, cool. She's my second favorite Senshi. Nice. Uh, there you go. And the original title, once it was changed, was Pretty Guardian, Sailor mm-hmm. Moon. Huh. Uh, so despite being so similar, the show was often critiqued for having a, quote, a slight male perspective, end quote, which I think, given how much nudity there is in it, it's not wrong. Let me ask you this question. Yes, Jason. As the person who's seen the show and me not seeing the show. Mm-hmm. What what do you think they were what do you think they were claiming was the male perspective in this? They're naked. Really? And there's panty shots in it of children. Because Sailor Moon is 14. Yes. When oh. we meet her and her the senshi are 14. So they are children. Weird. Yeah, I'm not this is not me Weird. putting a judgment call on Japanese culture or standards that I don't understand. But it's definitely, I would say, it makes me uncomfortable. And mm. there is... And you really like this, And I too. do. There is... They've actually gone back and reanimated a lot of that, so there's less panties. To get shots. rid of that? Yeah. They made their skirts a little longer. No, wait, are you talking about the manga or are you talking about the cartoon? The cartoon. Okay, I thought we were still talking about the manga. I'm no, sorry. so in the manga, it's considered to be more feminine. And the manga does have, you know, the transformation sequences, right? Where their clothes come off and their bodies light up and then the new clothes, their, their sailor outfits come on top of it. I do now, like, but that sounds very much like Transformers. Uh, it's not uh, not dissimilar, to be honest. And the same right. zeitgeist, really. Um, okay. In the comics... 
it's much more like they're ethereal and they're these like beautiful lights and manga's printed in black and white and grayscale, so you have no idea if they're naked, but in yeah. the cartoon they're flesh they're colored. Definitely but naked. they're they're peach colored, yeah. so they're naked. Um and then that you know, that has different connotations for different people at different okay. times. So right. that's some publication history that I just thought was really important. And now we're gonna talk about the fictional character history. So Sailor Moon is set in the Juban neighborhood of Tokyo. Fun fact, it is a real place. Cool. Someday I'm going to go there. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. st- I'm just going to go and live my Sailor Moon fantasy. I like how you're just like, we are in. We are going. We're going. You are coming with yep. me. It stars 14-year-old middle schooler Usaki Tsukino and her talking black cat who is actually colored purple named Luna because of course. Now, Jason, we talked about this already, but what does Usagi mean? A uh, rabbit. That's right. Because he's the big rabbit. Yosaki Yojimbo is the big rabbit from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yes. and Stan Sakai and all this stuff like that. Soon he's, he's to not, be a yes, cartoon adaptation. Yes, a Netflix adaptation. cartoon, yeah. Um, like a bunny, Usagi is delicate. She likes to sleep a lot. She likes to eat a lot. She cries all the time, and she's kind of dumb. My favorite thing about her is she's constantly eating. There's all okay. these great gifts of her eating. So... Luna one day reveals that she can speak. She gives Usagi a magical brooch, which transformed her into Sailor Moon, quote, a soldier destined to save the earth from all forces of evil, end quote. Usagi responds by bursting into tears. During the first arc of both the manga and the show, Usagi runs around Juban meeting and collecting all the other senshi. Senshi literally means warrior. Yep. So here's the breakdown of who they are. First, we get Amy Mizuno. She's Sailor Mercury. She's a nerdy bookworm with bubble and water powers. Then we meet Rei Hino. She's Sailor Mars. She is a loud shrine maiden with magical crows and fire power. I like her a lot. Then we meet Makoto Kino, who is Sailor Jupiter. She's a beautiful jock with lightning powers. And then lastly, we meet Minako Eno, who is Sailor Venus, uh, who is low-key a famous starlet and has the power of love. Minako also has a talking magical cat. This one is white and a boy, and his name is Artemis. And Artemis and Luna are boyfriend and girlfriend and have baby cats in the future. Named Diana. Okay. And then they also meet Mamoru Chiba, a.k.a. Tuxedo Mask, who's a hot high school boy and low-key an asshole. He's also 18 when he starts his romance with 14-year-old And they, all just live, they just all just live in this neighborhood. Yep, they all just live in Juban. And okay. they all go to the... They mostly all go to the same school. Uh, later on, they go to different schools. But if you'll notice, so we have Mercury, Venus, Moon, Mars, and Jupiter. Those are not all the planets. No. Those are just the first group of scouts that we have. So each member is given a makeup wand that they use to transform by shouting. And I will do the shout, but Jason, pick a pick one of the planets. Uh, do I have to pick one of the ones that yeah, you just mentioned? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jupiter. Okay, so they you transform by saying Jupiter Prism make up, and then you get the cool, slightly naked transformation sequence with your magical makeup wand. Is that is that what it actually translates to in English? Makeup? Yeah, and that's what they say. Yeah, because they're putting their costumes on, so they're putting makeup on. Oh, okay, okay, I get yeah. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and it was slightly different in the original dub, but in the new dub, they've gone back to a more literal translation of some of the lines. Mm. So Luna and Artemis, the talking cats, they basically info dump on the scouts for the first couple episodes, and they explain that, hold on to your butts, they are a group of reincarnated souls from the royal court of the Silver Millennium on the moon. And if they want to save their spiritual home out in space, they have to find the legendary silver crystal. What the hell this does that mean? This is a show for six year What the hell does that mean? Uh, well, so they used to live in the future in space and okay. then they got murdered and their souls got sent back into the bodies of teenagers who look exactly like their dead bodies and they have to save a crystal now. All righty. Okay. okay. Anime is so complicated. All righty. All right. So the Moon Kingdom ruler, Queen Serenity, sent her daughter, Princess Serenity, and her personal guard and their cats and her uh, daughter's boyfriend into the future where they could be reborn if they get this right. So working together, the Sailor Senshi battled their first Bad guy, Queen Beryl and her Dark Kingdom, which is very much the opposite idea of the Silver Millennium and the uh, Sailor Senshi. It's a bunch of dudes who are named after gems and Mm. who are evil. What are are some of the gems? So her team is made up of these dudes. uh, Their name translates to the four kings of heaven, Jadeite, Nephrite, Zoysite, and Kunzite. 
And let me tell you, they are some of the most effeminate men I have ever seen on television. Two of them are in love. We love it. The Dark Kingdom is also searching for the legendary Silver Crystal because it will free their imprisoned queen in the future, Mataria. So throughout this initial conflict, Usagi and the Sailor Scouts learn that the Dark Kingdom waged war against the Moon Kingdom and is directly responsible for their downfall and their eventual death. Okay. With me so far? Okay, but this yeah, they're all concerned about this future thing that's coming. Yes, that they've been sent back and reincarnated. I just didn't, I didn't realize there was a lot of time travel in this. Oh, thing. this is the, this is season one, baby. Oh, it's so much Lord. more complicated. Okay, after let's, this. let's buckle up. They also all have boyfriends and cram school in real life. Uh, they also they don't have time to deal with school. They're all this time travel stuff. Well, also Moon. like three of them are very low key dumb and have to go to cram school. So like Usagi's stupid. All right, uh, I love her, but she's dumb. They also learned that Usagi is the reincarnation of Princess Serenity from the future. Duh, she looks exactly like her. And Mamoru is the reincarnation of the princess's boyfriend, Prince Endymion. And the four kings that they've been fighting were actually Prince Endymion's closest friends, but have been corrupted in the darkness of his absence. So they were like his royal guard, but they've been without him in these bodies for so long that now they're bad guys. Okay. So everybody dies fighting the Dark Kingdom. Because that was the plan for the end of the first arc. Mm -hmm. Except Usagi, Sailor Moon, who kills the revived Queen Mataria, the evil queen that they were trying to reincarnate. Then she uses her super upgraded Sailor Moon powers to bring back all of her friends and their kitties from the grave. Something that happens in Sailor Moon is that every time they almost die, they get new, more badass powers slash every time Sailor Moon has to actually do something instead of crying and save everybody, her powers level up. She gets a new attack and she gets like an even more exceptional costume. Like she gets a different headpiece. By the way, I just want to say that right as soon as you talked about reincarnating the kitties, GHL intern Cat Brego walked into the room. <laughs> he knows. He knows what's up. So the second arc kicks off with the introduction of my previously mentioned second favorite character, Chibiusa, the daughter from the future. Um, why, can I can I ask? Yes. Um, why is she your favorite character, This do- or your second favorite character, the daughter? Yes, yeah, so my favorite character is Sailor Jupiter. Yeah, but why is the daughter from the future? Um, I really like Chibiusa. In the original English dub, she's called Rini for some reason. She's voiced in the original Deke dub. She's voiced by the lady who plays Lady Luck on The Flash. Uh, I'll try to look her up. Uh, she was on one of the last seasons that we watched together. But that, right. So I was very excited when she showed up there. Her name is Sugar something. She was also a host on YTV where the show originally aired. What do you mean the black chick lady? The black chick dealer? Yes. Okay. Um, so I like Chibiusa because she's like eight years old and she's smarter and more capable than everybody else around her. So she was about my age when I was first watching it. So, you mean Sugar Lynn Beard? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, so Chibiusa for me was like a big POV character, but because um, of who she is and how she travels back through time, which we'll learn a little bit more about, it's different than everybody else. She's one of the more capable senshi. And I like her because she has attitude and I always thought she was really cute. So she also has a boyfriend from the future. Who does? I'm sorry. Chibiusa. Okay. His name is Pegasus. He's a Pegasus. And so <laughs> and that's weird. And they're, okay. Yeah. Uh, and she, uh, and mm, he's her boyfriend. Mm. So she is chased back from the Silver Millennium by the Black Moon Clan, who become the enemies from the scent for the Senshi in the second season. I have to ask something. Yes. What do you mean when you say Silver Millennium? So Silver Millennium is the name of their king, their future kingdom okay, on okay, the moon. Sorry. It's I, called the Silver I, I Millennium. I put it as a time thing, and I was like, what is I, the time thing here? This was made in 1991. Yes, yes, yes. So Millennium, Millennium, mm-hmm. Millennium. Yeah, they're looking at 2000, and they're like, we gotta, we gotta get this thing. Yeah, so the Black Moon Clan is a group of baddies from the secret 10th planet of the solar system called Nemesis, who harness the power of the Dark Crystal to attack the legendary Silver Crystal and kill the royal family and the senshi and suspend them in animation. So, Chibiusa comes back to try to protect them from that. She leads the sailor senshi into the future where they get to see the Silver Millennium and its uh, capital city, Crystal Tokyo, for the first time. And while they're there, they discover a little more about where they came from and who they are reincarnations of. During this journey, they meet the first member of the Outer Senshi. So this main team is called the Inner Senshi because they're the inner planets, everything up to Jupiter. And then everything from Saturn onward, those are the Outer Senshi. Okay. 
So during this arc, we meet Sailor Pluto for the first time. Do you like her? Yeah, she's really pretty. Okay. She's uh, our friend of the show, Jordan Keeble's favorite nice. uh, Sailor Senshi. Right. So Sailor Pluto is visibly a character of color. The thing about uh, anime and manga is everybody is colored very pale. Um, so a lot of people like to assume that the default is Caucasian. I always assume because it was created in Japan, the default is Japanese. I thought they were all Asian, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know some of them have pink hair. Nobody actually has pink hair. They're magic. It's fine. Sailor Bluto, though, is colored like straight up brown. Okay. Uh, so she, which is, I just like the fact that we get anything like diversity in Sailor Moon, just because that's not something that was a very hot button issue at the time. She does not have a tiny little makeup one like the rest of the Senshi. She has a mm. huge staff because she is a guard. She guards the door to the space time continuum. And she is not supposed to let anybody go through that door. And she's not supposed to let anybody travel through time. But she broke her oath of protecting the door by being the one who let Chibiusa travel back through time so that she could um, stop her mother from being killed in the past. And in order to make up for this digression, she dies stopping the Black Moon Clan's leader from destroying the door and trapping all of the Senshi in the future and never allowing them to go home. Her death is really sad. And that happens in season two? At the end of season two. Okay. And it's during this battle that Chibiusa transforms into Sailor Mini Moon for the first time to avenge the death of Sailor Pluto because Sailor Pluto is her best friend because she was left alone with Sailor Pluto for a really long time. So speaking of magical girls assuming identities and fighting back death, I want to stop here and say that if you haven't figured it out, our original hero, Jupiter Jet, was named by me after Sailor Jupiter, who is my very favorite Senshi. And she is back in an all-new adventure this year called Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio, which is something that I'm super, super proud about. And you can order right now from your local comic book store. That's right, your local bookstore, Amazon.com, Walmart.com. Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio stars 17-year-old Jackie Johnson, who is the superhero Jupiter Jet, who soon discover that there are aliens and robots and all kinds of things in this all-ages adventure that she is not prepared for. It's Rocketeer meets Men in Black. It's very, uh, has a lot of elements of Sailor Moon in it. A so, lot of magical girl influence. Yeah, for and, sure. it, and it's a heartfelt story about the importance of family. So go check it out. Pre-order at your local store. Um, if you enjoy anything we talk about on the podcast, I have a feeling you're going to like our comic book written by Ashley and me. That's true. Yeah, so go check it out. Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. All right. So now we are back. We are talking about the third arc of Sailor Moon, which is going to include a new group of villains called okay. Death Busters. In okay. the original English, they're translated to the Bureau of Bad Behavior. They hail from the Tau Nebula, and they want to bring Pharaoh 90 to Earth to take over. Pharaoh okay, what is that second word? Pharaoh 90? Is it the actual word 90? It is, yes. No, okay. it's the number 90. Like that, nine right. is like Pharaoh, like from Egypt. I just wanted to be sure that there, there, was a, there was a brief moment where you said it and I was like, is she saying 90 or 90? Yeah. Or? Yeah. It's like a vaguely Egyptian looking villain. Okay. okay. All right. Every season they're going to meet new bad guys with weird cosmic powers. They were created and led by Professor Soichi Tomo. So to combat Pharaoh 90 coming to take over the world, Sailor Moon gets her hands on the Holy Grail. Yes, that Holy Grail. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Stop the presses here. <laughs> Sailor Moon deals with Christianity? Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. They really wanted to have their hands in everything, didn't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. considering the fact that... They wanted to kill everyone at the end of the first arc and end it like that. I just think they were going crazy. Okay. This is like 1993. Up ground. is down. Cats and dogs living together. Do you think maybe she was just a fan of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Because that came out in 89. So. <laughs> sure. Let's say yes. All right. No other mythology, just Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. She's so, a big fan of Indiana Jones. Sailor Moon gets her hands on the Holy Grail, and the power of the Holy Grail allows her to transform for the first time into Super Sailor Moon. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. 
How does the Holy Grail transform? It's got magic. That's not good enough. And Ashley. then it becomes a children's <laughs> toy. They make a toy of her Holy Grail. They make a toy out of the the, the cup of Christ. Yes, baby. Yes. Okay. I told you it was going to get wild. Oh, boy. We we just dove, dove off the deep end right here. Yeah. That's why we glossed over the easy stuff because okay. this is the fun stuff. All right. So during this season, we meet more of the outer senshi, including sexy race car driver Haruka Tenno, who is Sailor Uranus, and professional violinist Mishiru Keo, aka Sailor Neptune, they are tasked with protecting the outer rim of the solar system from any threats, basically from further out in space. So they're the last line of defense before you enter the soul system. In the original Japanese version, Mishiru and Haruka are girlfriends, and in the original Deke dub, they're cousins, which is way creepier, and they can say cousins all they want. Even six-year-old me knew they were girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't do that much to hide it. So we also meet a character named Hotaru Tomo, who's the daughter of the evil professors who created all of these baddies, Mm -hmm. who later awakens to the identity of Sailor Saturn. She has a long journey towards acceptance because she's so tied to their bitter enemy this season, and it is later revealed that she is this universe's harbinger of death. So Sailor Saturn is basically the embodiment of death here. We also get Sailor Pluto reincarnated in present day. Because remember, we saw her die when we went to the future. Okay. So now she's reincarnated in the past. And her name is Setsuna Mayo. And she is an incredibly intelligent physics student because there were too many dummies in the inner senshi. So now the outer senshi are all really smart savants. Hmm. She still has her power. She can control the dimensional gateway. And it's really convenient that she can do that because that's how the Deathbusters invaded Earth in the first place. So now she can be there as a stopgap. And she just closed the door? Yeah, basically. She locks so it. She's o- got a tiny So the season's key. over. Oh, no, 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 no. So, oh, wait, more Holy Grail? Yes. Harnessing her powers as Super Sailor Boon, <sighs> the Holy Grail, and the legendary Silver Crystal. Remember that from season one? No. Super Sailor Moon is... they put is, it into the Holy Grail as an ice cube and like kind of mix it up? It becomes and part of her it. costume. It's an Arnold Palmer. So you know how the Sailor <laughs> Scouts all have bows on their chests? Yes. Her, the crystal goes right in the middle of her boat, becomes part of her costume. Does the uh, Holy Grail dangle from that, like a sippy no, cup? No, she carries it in her hand, like a grown-up. But She's she like needs, 16 now. She needs the other hand to punch people. She also gets a big staff. Okay. So she got the Holy Grail and the legendary silver crystal, and she got super Sailor Moon powers. She is, she is able to defeat Pharaoh 90 with the help of Sailor Saturn, Harbinger of Death, who severs his ties to Earth forever and sailor pluto is then able to close the dimensional gateway once again and send all the bad guys back to outer space from whence they came the death busters yeah ready good that's the end of season three is the holy grail gonna stick around oh yeah baby they're also gonna Why get do you keep calling me baby during uh, this episode because this is so funny to me because i knew <laughs> i know how crazy this gets you and when you watch it i swear to you because there's like 40 episodes a season it doesn't seem like 40 episodes a season it do, it's it's probably like 28 but it doesn't <laughs> well, seem actually there is a big difference between 28 and 40. <laughs> that is double the number Boone, almost. Season three episodes. But I mean, there's a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot. List of Sailor Moon episodes. Hold, please. Look, okay. So- there's 46 episodes in season one. Oh, my God. So all of this That's information, this is so much information, it takes a lot longer to come at you than me Look, explaining it for the sake of this lesson. I'm just going to say something. If you love Sailor Moon, there's nothing wrong with that. Love what you're going to love. Absolutely. And I'm never going to be negative about anything that anybody loves. Um, and please don't let anything I say affect your love of that because it shouldn't. You love that thing, love it. Um, I will say this from listening to this history that I'd never heard before. We have two more seasons and a bunch of movies together. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I was kind of with it. And I kind of was like, okay, I can see where they're going. And then when the Holy Grail came out of left field, I was like, what is this? Like, this is like somebody poured uh, peanut butter in my goulash. And I'm like, what is this? Well, we have a lot more um, adjectives put in front of Sailor Moon's name when she powers up. So hold on. So yeah. then the fourth, we're in season four. fourth season. Okay. So Sailor Moon and the Senshi graduate from middle school and they go into high school and Tuxedo Mask is finished with high school. And so they face off against a new group of villains called the Dead Moon Circus, led by 
the okay. all-time greatest Sailor Moon villain, Queen Nehalenia, who claims to be the rightful ruler of the Silver Millennium and the rightful ruler of Earth. And as per, she's trying to get her hands on the legendary Silver Crystal because that's what all the bad guys want to do. We also learned during this arc that Tuxedo Mass possesses the legendary Golden Crystal. Get it? Gold, silver, gold, mm. silver, which is the sacred stone of the Golden Kingdom instead of the Silver Millennium, which is in fact a mystical place on Earth that Queen Nehalenia spends most of the season trying to invade. What was the name of that place again? I'm sorry. The uh, the uh, Golden Kingdom. The Golden Kingdom. Golden okay. Kingdom. So combining the legendary gold and silver crystals with the Holy Grail and the powers of the Senshi, oh, put this Sailor away. Moon is able to transform into eternal Sailor Moon with an even bigger staff and a better costume and uses her enhanced powers to defeat Queen Nehalenia, who is truly so awesome. It is then revealed that four of Queen Nehalenia's closest henchwomen, known as the Amazonas Quartet, are yet okay. another group of Sailor Senshi known as the Sailor Quartet, who were the first group of Chibiusa's guardians from the future. So basically, Baby Sailor Moon has her own group of Sailor Scouts from the future Sailor Quartet. And they have a bad version of them, the Amazon S Quartet. And they were only behaving evilly because they had awoken too early. And as a result, Queen Nehalenia was able to take advantage of them and corrupt them. But now that Chibiusa and Eternal Sailor Moon are there, they are good again. Okay. I'm fine with all That's that. That's season four. I'm fine with all that. Now season five, the final season. The final season. Where Sailor Moon and her senshi... Wait, wait, can I take a prediction? Sure. Jesus Christ is like, give me back my cup! Uh, no, Jesus Christ blessedly does not show up in this show. <laughs> well done with that wordplay. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. So Sailor Moon <laughs> and her senshi battle a group of evil senshi led by Sailor Galaxia, who wants to take over cool the name. galaxy and kill another bad guy named Chaos. Plus, she also wants to steal the legendary silver crystals and the rest of the magic crystals as well to enhance her powers. What about the Holy Grail? No, she's not interested in the Holy Grail, just the crystals. Why not? We've been interested for it. We've had three seasons this now. This is Japan. Uh, Ray is uh, um, not Christian, so we have no room for Christianity. Galaxia is incredibly powerful, and she manages to kill Tuxedo mask and a bunch of sailor senshi and even manages to collect several crystals over the course of the season mm -hmm. in order to save the love of her life and her friends sailor moon travels to the galaxy cauldron to fight sailor galaxia and she is accompanied by the sailor starlights so the sailor starlights come from the planet kaku where they protect sailor chibi chibi who is a literal infant jason who oh do you think Sailor Chibi Chibi is? Chibi means little, so this is little little. I don't. I have no idea. Wrong. She uh, yeah, is obviously. the goodness that used to exist inside Sailor Galaxia, but doesn't anymore. And so instead, it was railered into a baby Sailor Senshi. Okay. Um. <laughs> How does the Holy Grail figure into this? Uh, we're still using it to fight Galaxia. Okay, that's all I care about at this point. So, <laughs> along with Sailor okay. Chibi Chibi, her guardians, the Sailor Starlights, uh -huh. Eternal Sailor Moon is also joined by Chibiusa, her daughter, and the Sailor Quartet, her Sailor Scouts, and there ensues what is basically a war with Sailor Galaxia. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, the question I want to ask you is... Do you think that instead of just putting more things or more adjectives at the beginning of Sailor Moon's name, that they should have, like, upgraded her from Moon? Because when you think about it, the Moon is a satellite. You know, it's not even a planet. Like, mm -hmm. the main character is the Moon. So do you think, like, would... Because at one point you talked about the Galaxia. Yeah. And, like, when it, what do you think about, like, and then again, this is me just throwing out a crazy yeah, pitch. Yeah, You're yeah. a Sailor Moon fan. Instead of her just being Eternal Sailor Moon, and I know that's her name. Yeah. Would you have been okay with it? They would have been like, no, now she's Sailor Galaxy. Now she's Sailor Universe. Now she's Sailor Comet. So I used to think about this a lot when I was a kid because I do not understand why you would call her Sailor Moon and the rest of them are actual planets, planets. right? Yeah. It, like you say, it seems like a downgrade. Uh -huh. However, now- And there I is no Sailor Earth, right? No, there's not. Okay. But now um, I've really come around to her being called Sailor Moon because I'm so glad there's not a Sailor Earth because it feels lame because we know a lot about Earth. Or a Sailor Gaia. Yeah. Um, so the moon 
in terms of being earthbound is the most mysterious thing that you can have. I guess. So I like that she is Sailor Moon. And if she is Sailor Moon and that is where their kingdom is based, you can't be better than Sailor Moon. Okay. Fair. Um, Fair. I know the adjective thing is strange, but it is um, it is a very magical girl trope. Okay. So I'm okay with it. All right. I'm totally fine. Also because ultimately you just call her Sailor Moon. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So during the ultimate battle against Sailor Galaxia, it is revealed that Sailor Chibi Chibi, remember her, all of her old goodness rendered into a baby? I remember um, she made the tiny Chibi Chibi. Well, her true identity is Sailor Cosmos. Wait, wait. Whose true identity is? Sailor Chibi Chibi. Wait, 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 wait. So, so little, little Chibi Chibi. Uh-huh. Was secretly somebody else all, all along? Well, that's her true. That's like her final form, right? Sailor Cosmos. Sailor Cosmos. I, I like that name. It's a good name. And so she combines her power with Eternal Sailor Moon and the power of the legendary Silver Crystal, and they defeat Sailor Galaxia. They defeat Chaos, who was like the low-grade villain, and they're able to revive uh, Tuxedo Mask and the Sailor Senji because they always get revived. Yay! Everybody returns to Earth, safe and sound, and the series ends with uh, Usagi and Mamoru's wedding six years later. Fun fact, this makes Usagi about 20 years old when they get married, and Mamoru about 28. I'm going to ask the important question that everybody's going to ask right now. What happened to the Holy Grail? I think it just, like, lives in her house. So Sailor Moon has it? Sailor Moon has it. She just drinks? Just... Arnold Palmer's out of it. Um, I, I'm well. Since this is Japan, I'm going to say she drinks matcha out of it. Okay, cool. Now I want to say I know anyone who's a huge Sailor Moon fan is like screaming because I left out so many subplots. You can't include everything. Everybody. There's a whole you subplot where where Chibiusa, who I love, um, an adult version of her called Dark Lady, is a villain that they fight. I like the that future. name. Oh, I like she's that name. So beautiful, Dark Lady. That's really yeah, cool. She's, she's evil Sailor Moon. She's evil Chibiusa, the pink-haired oh, sorry, uh, sorry. daughter from the future. Mm-hmm. She comes back and fights them. Uh, there is so much mythology here, and I tried to hit what I thought were the most important parts in each arc. Please, if I miss something you love, shout it out on Twitter at GHL Podcast, and I will share it for other people but to check out. But be very kind about it, because there's yes. no point in sharing the tweet of, you forgot this, so you're wrong. No. It's impossible to talk about everything. This is one of the, this has been one of the hardest lessons for me to try and pare down. And I also, just to be honest, I tried to hit the points that I thought would make the most sense for Jason receiving all of these names at the well, same time. I'm glad time. you included the Holy Grail. <laughs> yes, I knew I had to. <laughs> so I just want to talk a little bit more about some of the adaptations and some different places where Sailor Moon has cropped You said up there were movies as well, right? Then. There have been movies, yes. So the manga was licensed since to be translated into English by Mix, which later evolved into Tokyo Pop in 1997. And they were the books were first published here in 1998. Okay. Until they lost the license in 2005, which is why they landed at Kondasha, which is who publishes them now. Okay. Remember I talked about Deke earlier, the production company? Yes, they were the Canadian dub company. So apparently I did note this and I forgot it. They did the first English language dub after a years long bidding war. It debuted in Canada in 1994. Okay. Um, Fun fact, there are exactly 200 episodes from the original series. The Deke dub is also notorious for cutting a recutting episodes and changing some of the storylines a little bit to fit with a more Western sensibility. So there are less... Uh, English language episodes and original Japanese episodes in the original series. Okay. In 2012, Kondasha and Toei Animation announced that they were beginning joint production on a new Sailor Moon television adaptation called Sailor Moon Crystal, which would be released concurrently worldwide, something that had never been seen in the franchise before. So it would air in America the same time it was airing in Japan, in England, in India, and Australia. It was amazing. It was supposed to begin airing in 2013 because that is the 20th anniversary of Sailor Moon. It was not released until July 5th, 2014. And it featured Kutano Mitsuichi voicing Sailor Moon again. She was the original Japanese voice of Sailor Moon. Very cool. They covered the same arcs as the original series. The Dark Kingdom, the Black Moon, and the Death Busters all got their own seasons again, but retold for a more modern sensibility. And in 2017, when Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3 wrapped up, they announced there would be another season and no further announcement was ever made. All right. Uh, which is a real bummer to me. Sailor Moon Crystal is um, is very divided. Some people Why? really don't like it. So the animation style is a little different. It's a little pared down. It's a little slicker. Um, 
A lot of people think it's not as beautiful as the original animation. A lot of people don't like that they're retreading uh, the same stories that we've already seen before instead of giving us something new. The two movies that are going to come out um, are tied into Sailor Moon Crystal, and they've been in production for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So there were also condensed animated movies released in Japan, a whole bunch of subsequent tie-in books. There's even English language novels that have been written by Stuart J. Levy and Liana Center. I have been trying to get my hands on them for about a decade, but they are so savagely out of print. If anyone has one and wants to sell it to so me, there are no in please print hit me up. Currently. No, because they are like relics because they made them when the cartoon started airing in North America Can and then never reprinted them. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Has there ever been an American company to make Sailor Moon comics? No. Interesting. Only to reprint them and translate them. They've always been original Japanese, you know, I, underseen, I, overseen by the original creator, weird. which is so I guess cool. I would have thought that like an American comic book company would have picked up the rights and been like, and given it to an American writer. Um, You know, manga's really weird like that. Mm -hmm. And I also bet Sailor Moon is very expensive. Well, that's that's the reason why I'm surprised because like it's such a big brand that I think an American comic company would be like, let's license it. Well, hold on, because after all this, there's been a bunch of Sailor Moon musicals. What? I know you're going to think this is insane. I just <sighs> want to mention them really briefly because they're really hard to find online. I don't speak Japanese, so I don't understand much about them. They've never been translated in English, but they are a huge sensation in the fandom. There have been, Jason Inman, 30 Sailor Moon musicals, three Zero. One is currently in pre-production, uh, and they began airing in 1993. Fun fact, they also include original material not included in the manga or the anime. So, Jason, I want to ask, we know Spider-Man had musicals. We know Superman had a musical. What Western superhero should have a musical? Well, Superman has had a musical. Yeah, so is Spider-Man. Um, what Western hero should mm -hmm. have a musical? Mm-hmm. I don't really think any of them should have a musical, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, part of my gut said Miles Morales, but we've already seen a bad Spider-Man musical, so I don't know if I want two. Mm -hmm. None of them? <laughs> I mean, maybe... Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to throw out a crazy pitch. Let's say Wonder Woman. Great. Because Wonder Woman. with Wonder Woman, you could lean into not only the 1970s when the TV show was Ooh, disco. around... But you could also, like, throw in... Here's the cool thing you could do with a Wonder Woman musical that you couldn't do with a lot of other superheroes. You could bring back, if you, if you know anything about classical theater, the Greek chorus. Mm -hmm. They could be the narrators of the play. You could make a lot of Greek mythology jokes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and Hercules the Disney movie also proved that as well. Um, all right, so I found a clip from... Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, the Super Live sings Moonlight Denisetsu. Apparently, it this was, is going to be in Japanese. So just apparently, it was a 2.5D musical adaptation celebrating the 25th anniversary of the popular Japanese manga series, which finally hit the U.S. It made its American premiere in the Washington, the Warner Theater in Washington D.C. on March 24th, 2019. Here is the song. Ready? Here we go. Oh, this is the theme song. I know all the English words to this. <laughs> so far, nobody's seen. I don't know what's going on here. The I know the English words. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right, I mean, they look like the Sailor Moon girls. So That was last year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's one in pre-production right now. Cool. So due to the popularity of the live action musicals, a live action television series was created. Uh, for America or Japan? In Japan. Wow. Called Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. It is actually really great. The effects are super cheap, but it is way closer to the original source material. And this was last year? No, no, no. This was, oh. I don't have the year, but it was in the 90s. Okay. Uh, we could actually do a whole episode on this series and maybe an episode retrospective. Only on if they it. have the Holy Grail. 
Um, at the time of this recording, it is streaming on Hulu. So if that is something that you want, please shout that out because I would love to force Jason to watch it. Only if it has the Holy Grail. If I can find an episode with the Holy Grail, will you watch it with me? Yes, 100%. I don't think it gets that 100%. Far. Uh, I'm is, in if it has the Holy Grail. That is my bar it for get Sailor that Moon. Far. The it Holy is, Grail must be. It is part. It is 100% canon now that Sailor Moon must involve the Holy Grail. Uh, so the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon did not run as long. Um, it's another retelling of the Dark Kingdom arc, which is the original arc. Sure. And there is additional original plot and characters in the series. Uh, and it ended up with two direct-to-video movies to cap it off. Okay. So there you go. There is another series called Special Act that picks up four years after the series. Is it where, called Sailor Moon Special Act? Yes. Okay. Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Special Act. It's the first movie um, where Usagi and Mamoru are getting married. So you see their wedding. And then Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Act Zero is a prequel that focuses on the origins of Sailor V and Tuxedo Mask. And then lastly, Sailor Moon has had... 15 video games and role-playing games and VR games and 40 games at Universal Studios in Japan that almost always involve you playing as a Sailor Senshi and fighting the Black Moon Clan because the Black Moon Clan is so pretty. Fun fact, you can actually watch me playing the role-play game as an original character named Sailor Psyche on Hyper RPG from a few years ago. I will share it in the social media. Really? Yeah. I forgot about that. It was truly, I've done a lot of things at Hyper. I've had a lot of great fun there. It's my favorite thing I've ever I was done gonna, over there. I was about to ask you if you had played any of the Sailor Moon video games. Uh, I have not. All right. Uh, and that's the end of my lesson because if I throw any more adjectives at Jason, I think his brain will explode. Hey, if it's... Uh, at this point, if it's not about the Holy Grail, I think I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so funny. I thought about trying to create a game where I showed you pictures of them and tried to see if you could name any of the characters. <laughs> oh, that would be a funny game, although it would be a terrible game for an audio podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was going to be like, who's the one with blue hair? And yeah. you're like, I don't know, Sailor Blue. Uh, shall we move into the recommended reading? The recommended reading is the section of the podcast where Professor Ashley is going to suggest three to four to maybe six books or movies or DVDs that if you want to follow up and learn more about Sailor Moon, you can check it out. And you can find all of these recommendations over at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. So I am going to recommend, firstly, Sailor Moon box set. That is uh, volumes one to six. Uh, You can get, that's kind of your best bang for your buck if you want to get as much Sailor Moon as possible. After that, I am going to recommend Sailor Moon season one. If you're more of a recommended viewing person than a recommended reading person, that is the season in the core mythology that is most popular and most repeated for Sailor Moon. Uh And then lastly, I am going to recommend Musical Pretty Guardian. Now, this is my like outlier, super, super weird choice, but I think if you've gone with me this far on the journey, you are going to be here for it. This is a filmed version of Petite Étranger, which is the French titled musical, which means Little Stranger, uh, that introduces Chibi Use. Uh, this is where you can watch. It's considered to be one of the easiest to find musicals. I don't know if it is the best one. So now for our discussion portion, we are going to bring in a special guest who loves Sailor Moon as much as I do, if not more. Please welcome to Geek History Lesson, creator of the Adorned by Chi Empire and original manga series, Jackie A. Hi, Jackie. Thank you so much for joining us on Geek History Lesson today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I, listeners, I've been trying to make this happen for a long time, both this episode and getting Jackie to come and chat with us. So I'm super excited today to get into all things Sailor Moon. So let's start with the easy first question. Where did you first meet Miss Sailor Moon? Okay, so (laughs) I told this story so much. I'm like, I hope that it's not boring people. (laughs) But (laughs) it was actually my older brother who got me watching Sailor Moon. Um, we shared a bunk bed. And so whatever he watched, I watched, you know, he watched Power Rangers. I watched Power Rangers. He was watching Sailor Moon. So I was watching Sailor Moon. He clearly has excellent taste. (laughs) Exactly. Or he did in the past. Like he's fallen off. He's not a nerd anymore, but it's okay. (laughs) Uh, Disappointing. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But yeah, that was my first like taste of like Sailor Moon and anime in general. Um, was like watching it way back when, you know, <laughs> with my older brother. 
Do you have a clear sense of what it was that connected you to Sailor Moon? For me, it was I had never seen any art like that before. And I just thought they were so beautiful. I was like, I guess I'm going to keep watching this. (laughs) Same here. I mean, I was pretty young. So for me, I was like, this is cute. This is very cute. I love anything that had like girls and girl power. Like I was one of those people just like I was all PPG. Um yes. totally spies. <laughs> yeah, like anything that was like girl powered. Um I was all for it. So I definitely loved like the cutesy weapons, like the dresses, the sparkles, the transformations. Um even like the crybaby nature of Sailor Moon. I'm like this is this is it. I love it all. <laughs> It's uh, her crybaby nature is so funny because I feel like in the manga, it's much less of a thing than it is in the anime. In the anime, it's like constantly played for jokes, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I love the joke. (laughs) (laughs) I I resonated with you. I've been a crybaby since birth. So, (laughs) yes, I see myself. (laughs) Uh, Quick sidebar. Were you a Cardcaptors or Cardcaptors Sakura fan as well? I watched it, but I didn't connect as much as Sailor Moon. Interesting. Okay, then let's uh, let me ask you this: Who was your favorite senshi, and why? Okay, so it was kind of I always say Sailor Moon, but it's actually maybe sixty forty, like Sailor Moon and then Sailor Mercury. <laughs> um, so I, like I said, I connect to the crybaby um, nature, the laziness. <laughs> Loving, loving the food. Ladies, and you like, are like one of the hardest working people I can think <laughs> of. You have so much going on. It's crazy because I feel lazy because I'm like doing all this while I'm laying in bed on my laptop. So it's like, it's not like I'm, I'm not physically moving or anything like that. <laughs> You're um, fighting evil. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, with Sailor Mercury, I was definitely like... I was one of those kids that like everyone thought I was going to go to Harvard, you know what I mean? And like, I had all this pressure to succeed. Um, I was shy uh, and everything like that. And so that's why I kind of relate to her as well. So it's like a mashup. (laughs) Do you have some, uh, do you have some Sailor Mercury blue hair? You're very, you're very iconic hair looks on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah i switch my wigs like every maybe two weeks <laughs> so, i well i've worn blue hair when i used to sell like the colorful wigs yeah yeah but since then i have not worn blue hair but i need to because it was a vibe there you go i people can't see it but i'm looking at your skype icon and you have uh that really really cute purple hair on Oh, thanks. <laughs> very, very magical girl vibes. So it's yeah. funny when you said um, Mercury, I was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I would have guessed. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very uh, who is your favorite Game of Thrones character and why? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which I don't have a favorite Game of Thrones character because I never finished it. <laughs> uh, somebody somewhere is screaming into their iPhone right now. <laughs> oh, definitely my ex-boyfriend because he's a fanatic. Like well, he's actually like crazy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've teased this a lot and I'm assuming that if people are here, they either know who you are or they have done some furious Googling. But we did all of your basic who's it's and what's it's, but let's talk about how Sailor Moon and Magical Girls have influenced your own art and the Adorned by Chi brand. Sure. So (laughs) I think anyone who like kind of looks at the brand now would definitely see the strong Magical Girl influences. I mean, we also have a Magical Girl comic book. Hey. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. so, yeah, I would say that it's inspired the content, but then also the heart and the vibe because we're all about being nice, um, understanding, inclusive, um, and celebrating femininity. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's how it's influenced by art and brand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what the first Sailor Moon centric piece that you designed was? Yes, it was a shirt that Usagi <laughs> taught me with like the crescent moon on top. Um, and I had only designed 
that was one of two shirts that I designed. Um, the other one was like black and proud and like this pink cute kind of like Barbie font and then the Sailor Moon shirt. And those two shirts are kind of what exploded my business. <laughs> uh-huh. um, before then, I was making like hand flower crowns and um, yeah. So it, it, I just kind of like pivoted. I kept the spirit of like why I started Alive, which was to represent Black women being cutesy, magical, feminine, and all of that. And then I added my other interests, which was like anime, um, feelings. <laughs> I don't know if feelings aren't interests, but like anime and feelings and, you know, my other nerdy pursuits. So, um, yeah, so it's inspired a lot. My bad. I was talking in circles right then. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, definitely not your bad. It's interesting that you brought up the Usagi Tabi shirt because that's the first time I discovered you was I saw a photo of that and I was like, well, I need that. So. <laughs> All right, Jackie, any parting love we want to throw Sailor Moon's way before I let you go and beg you to come join us on the Geek History Lesson Extra? <laughs> Um, yeah, I want to <laughs> say that, like, if it wasn't for Sailor Moon, I wouldn't exist. So there we go. <laughs> I think that's the ultimate love. <laughs> what a lovely tribute. You can't definitely can't say more than that. All right, listeners, Jackie has <laughs> very graciously, I say bullied, but it is a jest, agreed to join us on Geek History Lesson Extra. So go and check that out on Patreon, where today we are going to be chatting about how to create your own manga, because we've never had a manga creator on the show before. And before we wrap this up, Jackie, can you just let people know where they can follow you online, where they can see all your amazing photos, where they can support you, all that good stuff? Sure. Okay, so you can find me as a person everywhere on the internet at Jackie A, and that is J-A-C-Q-U-E-A-Y-E. Um, and you can follow Adorn by Chi Yay. everywhere. <laughs> and that's A-D-O-R-N-E-D-B-Y-C-H-I. I am so thrilled that Jackie was able to join us. I have been trying to get her on the show forever. And I'm Such a great conversation. I'm so glad that she could share magical girls with us. All right, so let's go to Jason's favorite part of the podcast, the teaching tweet. The teaching tweet is an antiquated part of this podcast that Ashley (laughs) and the listeners still want to do because we once did this section where, you know, we talked about the lesson in like 140 characters. And then Twitter made it 280 characters, and so I didn't see the point anymore. But the fans want to keep it, so we're going to do it. Ashley, Mm -hmm. you have 140 characters to 280 characters. I don't remember the characters you have anymore, but... Ashley's going to sum up everything about Sailor Moon in a tweet. You can find the tweet at GHL Podcast on Twitter. <clears throat> Sailor Moon. Shaping the taste of nine... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Can't read. Take two. You can find this tweet <laughs> on GHL Podcast on Twitter. <clears throat> Sailor Moon. Shaping the taste of young women in the 1990s around the world by Moonlight. Exclamation point. Hashtag Holy Grail. Sure. Hashtag Holy Grail. We'll see if I remember that. (laughs) I'm writing it down. From everything you told me, it seems to be the most important part. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Now we're going to slide right into the honor roll. Jason, what's the honor roll? The honor roll is where if you go over to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review, you can literally write anything or you can write about your love of the show and we will read it on the air because it helps new listeners Find the podcast on Apple Podcasts. And if you're an international listener, um, you can send us your international review through Apple Podcasts at geekhistorylesson at gmail.com. Yeah, because we can't access your Apple Podcasts. We can't see them. We don't live in your country. I'm sorry. We want to, but we can't. So we have three Senchi joining the honor roll today. First Excited. is Zip Frisbee, who says best. Oh my God, what a name. That's a great. Best podcast, period. This podcast is the first one to go to if you want to hear anything geek nerd related. Jason and Ashley would do a great job at breaking down the material. Thank you. So sweet. They are also joined by Landon Towers with Zed, so you know they are cool, who says, y'all be good, real good. 
Thanks so much for this. I'm 17 and an aspiring filmmaker and love comic book characters. Y'all give really good overviews of all the characters, and I love the variety of different kinds of shows as well. I've been listening for about a year now, of course going back to watch the old ones too, and y'all never cease to bring interesting, fun content. Keep up the great work. Smiley face with sunglasses from Landon. Thank you, Landon. And lastly, they are joined by McCory Pants, who says, In the depths! This show is great. A deep dive into interesting characters from all over comics. Some characters I wasn't interested in, I now am. Did I mention the back catalog of episode? What the depth? Thank you. You just get very short applause. Yeah, there we go. So McCory Pants, Landon Towers, and Zip Frisbee, welcome into the Teacher's Lounge. Professor Jason, what is going on in here today? Well, over in the corner... There's a cup that somebody left by the sink. They didn't wash it. You might think it's an old coffee cup, but it's not. It's actually the Holy Grail. And it was left there by Mrs. Cosmic Moonlight Starlight Pluto Astrophysics Aries. Hey! Pulaski. Uh, welcome to the Teacher's Lounge. Thank you for your reviews. She teaches ancient Middle Eastern art. Uh, Professor Jason. Yes. Would you like to see what the Holy Grail looks like in Sailor Moon? Yeah, show I have, me. I have a handy dandy. Only if you share it to the listeners. Visual light. I will absolutely share it. But that is what she looks like. It has wings? Everything in Sailor Moon has wings. All right, fair. Like yeah. Namor. Sure. Like, like Namor like, the Submariner. Like Namor. <laughs> there you go. Jason uh, pointing where nobody can see at uh I'm point I'm point intern I am pointing at GHL intern Brego because I told him to pick up some boxes and right now he is curled into a ball with his face underneath his stomach. And I don't know how that's working. Can I share with you one more fun fact about the Holy Grail? Um, the real Holy Grail or the Sailor Moon? The Sailor Moon, okay. the only real Holy Grail. Well, like I was like, we're going to go to Monty Python, maybe? Uh, absolutely not. Why not? So if you want to use the power of the Holy Grail to turn into Super Sailor Moon, what do you think you have to yell? Remember makeup is what we yelled the first time? Drinky, drinky? It's crisis, make up. That's what activates. Crisis? Crisis, baby. Make up. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense. It gives you the power of the spiral heart moon rod and allows you to perform the rainbow moon heartache. If Sailor Moon was based in the DC universe, then that would make sense. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Alrighty. So don't forget, <laughs> yeah. everybody. I didn't realize the podcast <laughs> the is over. Jason part of the pod. <laughs> don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast and download this podcast over at Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Everywhere you can find podcasts, go subscribe, download. Tell your friends about the pod. That's how we get new listeners. And also, don't forget, you can follow this podcast on everywhere on social media. Ashley, where are those places? You can do that at geekhistorylesson.com or on facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson. Don't forget to follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. And don't forget, you can support the Patreon that supports this podcast, that keeps this podcast going over at patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Uh, we do an extra extra exclusive pod. actually we do like six exclusive podcasts a month over there mm -hmm. this week the one that ties into this one is called geekish lesson extra you can only hear it on patreon and ashley what's that episode going to be well about? jackie is going to very generously be returning to chat with us about how to create an original manga series because nice. it is very different than creating western comics which is what jason and i do so definitely go check that out and also check out jupiter jet and the forgotten radio it's in comic book stores very soon october 7th yeah go find where sailor jupiter's costume colors inspired jupiter jet that's right now we're to the last section of the podcast how Hashtag stick around, which I need a sound effect for. I need something. I need something. Hashtag stick around. There it is. Ooh, that's a good one for Sailor Moon. Um, if you stuck through the plugs, we're going to talk a little bit more. I, I always love, I, I really want to know, and please, listeners, let us know on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, do you stick around to hashtag stick around? Like, Every let, time people do, I always try to retweet them. I do, because like, I want to say, like, I... We came up with hashtag stick around because I wanted to trick people where people like when they hear the plugs, they're like, well, I'm done with the podcast. Why does it go on for another 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, actually like the teaser at the end of a movie trailer. Yeah. What are, you, what are we talking about, Ashley? 
Well, um, I honestly, if I reflected on this properly and if I'd written my lesson properly, I would have written one down and I would have stuck to um, mm. the Holy Grail talk for after this podcast. <laughs> uh, so, Jason, because you are not going to be part of the extra this week, I want to ask you, I know I threw a lot of information at you. Yes, you did. Um, so I'm going to become NPR right now. Having yes. heard the very rushed through Barris description of what this series is. Yes. Do you understand why it resonated with a generation of women? Which is not to say it didn't resonate with men as well, but mostly do you, women. Do you think it only resonated with one generation of women? I would like your say that my generation do you don't you don't think it translated further? I just think it's still around. It was at its uh at the height of its power in the mid to late nineties. Okay. So hmm. Why do I think it? No, do you do you understand yeah. why? Because I mean, obviously, um, I think I might be able to bully you into watching a couple episodes with me, but this is never going to be your jam. It's just the way that your tastes are, and it's, that's totally fine. It's wish fulfillment and cosmology. Mm -hmm. Like I totally get it. Like it's very similar to Green Lantern in a lot of ways. Each different lantern has their different powers, has mm -hmm. their colors. They're from a different base. I mean, also like. I think if you're just like sort of into like the Zodiac signs and stuff like that, I think you are definitely prone to be in this. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I think it is an interesting franchise, but it is interesting. And it kind of makes sense that when you told me the idea that the creator of the show wanted to end it after one, how when they were like, no, you can't do that. Then the creator was like, then everything in the kitchen sinks going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I have one final indulgence I'd like to ask of you. Will you take this internet quiz to see which Sailor Scout you are? <laughs> sure, let's go. What's your favorite planet? Uh, Earth is not an option. I like Mars. Okay. Do, do, do. Next. This is a very laborious This is a very site. slow quiz. What's your favorite color? Blue, orange, pink, or purple? Uh, of those choices, blue. Yeah, well, you got to go with the choices they I know, give me. I know, I know. My favorite do, color do, is actually red, everybody. Uh, do I need to have music? You, do I need to have music during this? This is a bad one. <laughs> it takes so long. Hang on. I'm going to BuzzFeed. <laughs> Rainfall.com. Uh, I'm calling you out right now. You suck. Did we go to... Oh, we, we're going to... We're starting a brand new quiz? We're doing a new one because it failed. Okay. Take two. Favorite season. Of there's Sailor... Only, there's only four seasons. Oh, I thought you were asking me of Sailor Moon. I was like, no, no. Favorite, uh, favorite, like, like, uh, or seasons, like, fall, summer. I like spring. Spring. Do, do, do. Uh, what, you're your zodiac sign? You're a Gemini. I am a Gemini. Do, do, do. That means that's going to determine it. Pick a character, Jason. You don't know anyone from Sailor Moon. Tuxedo Mask, Luna, Artemis, Queen Serenity, Diana, or Queen Beryl. Give me Artemis because it's connected to Greek. He's the kitty. Mm -hmm. He's the boy kitty. What do you do when you're stressed? Eat ice cream, <laughs> meditate, go shopping, listen to music, read a book, or exercise? I eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we had ice cream today. Pick a color. Blue, green, black, purple, pink, yellow. I guess blue again. <laughs> it's like an aqua blue. Pick a quality. Protective, practical, perceptive, charming, energetic, mysterious, creative. You're going to have to slow those way down for me to be able to remember them all. <laughs> protective, practical, okay. perceptive, charming, energetic, mysterious, creative, sincere, or determined. Let's go charming. I like that for you. You got... Sailor Venus, you are so fab and you know it. Everyone around you knows it. You're super talented and love to show your skills off whenever you get a chance. Boy, they kind of nailed you. While people <laughs> yeah, might sure. see you as a little too into yourself, you're by no means selfish. And you never forget to give back to the community and use your talents to help others. That's true about you. Uh, you are have a truly generous heart, charming personality, and seriously perfect hair. No wonder people <laughs> love you. <laughs> I think they nailed it. Emma Fife is so jealous right now. Why? Sailor Venus is her favorite. Oh, really? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, if I can, if all, if, if I can just get the Holy Grail, then this will be perfect. <laughs> uh, and that is it for this episode of Geek History Lesson. That has been all through the moons, all through the universe, all through the cosmology, all through the night. I have been Jason. Which one am I? Venus. Jason Sailor Venus and Moon. I've been Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, will you please close out this Sailor Moon podcast? Class is now dismissed.